spit on the shaft, move it up and down. <sighs> Welcome to the video, we're going to show you how to do a carbon fibre safety check, second hand bike, we just bought this on Facebook Marketplace. Today's video, we start with a hydration chart. Am I hydrated? Aim for clear urine at least 10 times a day. Eat a diet rich in fresh fruits and vegetables. Drink a quart of water before meals. Thank you. Welcome to the video. We're going to show you how to do a carbon fibre safety check. Second hand bike. We just bought this on Facebook Marketplace. You wanted, me, you wanted me to buy a Tour de France level bicycle. This is Levi Leipheimer, Gelsteiner, Team Replica, 7900 Durace. This is the Tarmac, Specialized Tarmac SL1, S-Works. It's got ceramic speed bearings in there. It's, the group set's immaculate, it's incredible condition. This would be one of the best condition Gelsteiner S-Works Tarmacs in the world, I reckon, right now. We've got it for 1200 Aussie off Facebook Marketplace, original owner, low miles, never been crashed. We're gonna do a safety check and show you what to look for so you don't get a carbon fiber fork snapping on your ride. Let's do it. First of all though, we're gonna weigh this thing because I know you're going, how much does this weigh? You pick it up with one hand, it's like lightweight, it's like Natasha. Super light, super slim, super tight, super fast. Let's weigh this thing first. Right, so we're gonna do some scale weighing here. She got shot up by a cat, always wear gloves. I'm dealing with pussy and uh, all right, so that's on Zero. Alright, this is a 2.5 kilo weight. We're going to calibrate the scale. 2 point. So, very, so we're doing 10 grams. Alright, so we know this is legit scale. We can take that out there. Get this ready. Alright, here we go. Scale of truth. What does it say, Natasha? 7.05 7.05 No pedals This cost 1200 Aussie Which is US We'll have to work that out So 7.05 Thanks for coming, no pedals It'll be less without cages as well So, so let's say 6.9 Without pedals And it's got heavy tyres on it as well Let's notice, the Victoria tyres So Very interesting This is the deals out there now We can make it even lighter 1200 Aussie, what did that cost in the US? Let's look it up. I'm going to show you now how to do a safety check on a carbon bike second hand. Contact points, I've taken the seat post out. I'm just inspecting for any cracks in the carbon, just any little hairlines, just really getting a thorough uh, check in the light. Just taking my time, I've had some food, so I'm not rushed. I'm going to get this little flashlight here. I'm going to shine it down here and check for anything looking dodgy there. I'm also going over. Just sort of looking, I can probably give it a clean, but I'm just sort of looking at my fingers and nails just for any, any compression cracks, anything like that. This seat post looks really good, uh, and these seat posts do have a good track record. They're the specialized, uh, it's the fact carbon, and so it does have a, actually it does have a little bit of a mark up here. Looks like it's been slammed down maybe. So actually no, that, that would be from the saddlebag rubbing. So if I was a, a heavy rider, I wouldn't really, I'd be keeping an eye on that. What I will do though is I'll put a bit of tape over that to prevent forever wear. So eventually what would happen, that would snap off and that would cause a, especially if it's a weak point there, that could cause a basically a carbon fiber spear just snapping off and have the pointy carbon fibers piercing your anus, your rectum, your sphincter. So that would potentially become a sphincter spear, a sphincter spear rather. So I'll put a little bit of helicopter tape over that and that will prevent any more saddlebag rubbing, so that's always a good one to check out. Okay, this is a really comprehensive video, and I'm going to show you the tips and hints. But basically going there for any cracks, and anything like that, then I wouldn't use this post. But otherwise, it does look pretty good. Just have to fix up that. I'm going to put this saddle on there. It's one of my favorite saddles, the Specialized Body Jump G130 Phenom. Again, saddles is personal preference. You might love this saddle, you might hate it. I like it because it's flat, it doesn't bow, and it's got the the groove for you. For your Gucci you put him in there. So there you go. And look at check out these Durace crank sets. I mean, this this is probably the best 7900 group set I've ever seen condition wise. 
immaculate for the age. Very, very good. Another, while I'm here, while I'm here, there is some little paint cracks around the BB, which is very common with these all these specialized bikes. They all did it. It doesn't, it's not, it, warranty probably warranty that, but it's not an issue. It's not a safety issue, it's just cosmetic. The, the alloy uh, hub body in there sort of, it's just a flex zone, so it causes a bit of a paint crack. For me, it'd be a, to get warranty on this would be a disaster. This could get chopped up and chucked into landfill. And it's an, it's an incredible bike. These bikes are incredible. So that would be it. You know, that would be pointless to claim warranty on that. They would give you warranty, but for me, it would be you know unnecessary because it's not a genuine. It's just cosmetic, and it's on the other side as well. All right, so that's just purely cosmetic. In my experience, I've never ever seen a BB just drop out of a bike. That would never happen, especially uh, with the Chinese manufacturers that specialize, etc. Use so that's just purely paint crack, and you see it very very common on a lot of these bikes. Uh, from this era, very common, just a paint crack, nothing to worry about. Here I'm going to shine the torch down there, you probably can't see it that well. Oh, here you go, it's not too bad. Yeah, basically look, looking in there, just sort of seeing if any fibers cracking out, oh, looks really hunky-dory to me. There's no EPO needles stashed down there, there's no cocaine in there, so not stashed with money. I bought a bike one time, it had like $100 bills just stashed in there. Um, no, I didn't, just bullshitting, but yeah, so there's always just a bit of a check there. And it looks pretty good to me. Also, we can pull off the seat cap. Check that for any cracks in there. It looks pretty good. Around here, there's an, there's an area that's prone to the cracking. That's just a little lacquer mark there. That looks all hunky-dory. Occasionally, if someone does a seat post up too tight, it can split. It can crack just there. Again, it generally cracks, but doesn't go any further than that. So, no reason for concern. This one looks legit. Can't see any damage. Again, Things might crack, but then they don't get bigger than that, all right? So, another thing to keep in mind. You might get a crack in it, but it's not going to get bigger than that. This one looks fantastic. Yes, on these SLs, this is back on the day when Specialized did a lot of good instructions. This is a frame slot. That's the frame slot. So, this has been designed like that. It's like a bit of a beak, a bit of a cape, and that just slams down on that, and good to go. So, frame slot, line up with that, good to go. And you tighten these up to about five, six newton meters. It always says on the side, there you go, 6.2. Use a torque wrench if you're not experienced. That bit of discoloration there, pretty normal. This, on every seat post has a minimum insert, so that much has to be in the frame. So I put my thumb on that, and that has to be in there. And that way it's going under, it's going under there. If you put it like that, it's gonna snap your seat post, it's gonna snap your frame, so it has to go that much under, all right? So you can measure it out. So what you could do, if you wanted to weight weenie this bike out, you'd obviously, that's a lot of seat posts there, we'll zoom out here, that's a lot of seat posts, so you can cut as long as you've got that much in the frame, so you could cut it, my mark is, where's my mark, I, I just marked it before, uh, it is, where's mark your seat post gently, here it is, so I put that little tiny scratch in there, so see in there, alright, and we'll zoom it back out, so I've got that much post that I don't need, so I could measure it from there, put it to my little line, so I can cut it, I can, I can cut that much off. I won't cut it though, because I'll be selling this bike, and the person might be told me, so there you go. That's just a way to tweak out the weight weenie. Always measure your seat post, the, the beware of that measurement mark there. That has to be under, all right, does it make sense? That's your minimum extension point. And don't grease carbon fiber. We're gonna check the rims as well. What I'll do is I'll take, and not in this video, but I'll take the tires off, take the rim tape off, and check all the eyelets as if there's any cracks in there. This is the first thing I notice on this one. And here you can see the voids. Uh, there's the voids there. So, is that safe to ride? Mm, a bit of cracking in there. For me, it'd be okay. I probably wouldn't feel too comfortable someone else riding that. But, uh, you know, heavier rider might be of an issue. But for me, for my personal experience, it'd be okay. It's just the carbon demon laminating or whatever's going on there. So that's just uh, that's that that's that there. So that would be a, a weak point for a heavier rider, in my opinion. Uh, so that's just in the braking track there. And these are Reval wheels, very nice. Got ceramic speed bearings in there, and uh, they're they're a great wheel. Very ride very nicely. This though, uh, it's only on the front. It's not on the rear. Well, actually, a little bit on the rear, but not too much. So, there you go, it's just inspecting the rim surfaces there for any cracks, 
you also want to go around the eyelets and look for any cracks in there oh, so I'll do that as well I'll do that but importantly it cracks from the inside because that can cause the rim to <laughs> explode so you want to just suss that out as well and if we can hear in this spot here we can see as I mentioned before you can sort of see that that uh, paint cracking around there that's just paint so, all right, so that's that bottom back it's not gonna you know it's not gonna drop out of the bike okay so no need to concern on that one this though be of an issue potentially but for lightweight riders experienced riders not too much here we go this is a great safety check you can do when you're waiting for your mates I'm gonna take my gloves off for better dexterity and uh, all you need to do is a multi tool so this is a very very simple safety check now we're going to look at the areas of a bicycle that fail catastrophically fail the number one area is the fork steer this is the area that snaps in your handlebars and causes catastrophic failures is generally here because people do it up too tight or they don't have a long enough steer plug this applies mostly for carbon fiber steerers meaning this, this part in here is carbon fiber all right it can happen in alloy as well, down here just wear and tear, accidents. Good idea to drop your fork out every now and then, check it every few thousand K, five thousand K, or after any crash, or if you even loan your bike to a mate. That's why they recommend rental bikes, because you know what, someone's crashed it and they haven't reported it, and it's like, you know. Anyway, so this is the main area here. Second would be this, the handlebars snapping from the impact. Again, been over torqued, or the meaning done up, the bolts have been done up too tight. It's caused of course, the crimp. In the alloy or carbon, and over time that becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, and then eventually on a big powerful person, a big pothole, a big bump, bang, just snaps, lose control. Third most dangerous part is under here, especially with carbon bars, would be we'd have to take this bar tape off and inspect that bracket around there and undo it, get a whiteout pen, make sure you mark it so you can put it back to where it was, and just check for any corrosion. If you're, if you're a really sweaty person like me. Or maybe if you're a meat eater, that meat sweat, I've seen bars literally snap in half because of the meat sweat, especially on the home trainer or the ergo, just dripping onto the bars and just like, basically melting, corroding, the, the getting the bar tape and just yeah, literally with alloy bars, meat sweat just causing bar failure. So one most dangerous part, two most dangerous part, three most dangerous part for catastrophic failures, uh, four would be you've hit something front on like a gutter and you've caused a crack here and a crack there and that'd be quite evident and you know eventually the whole front end of the bike could just fall off <coughs> she's sneezing but you'll see that really clearly a, a bicycle just doesn't just fail all right you'll see a big crack here a big crack there and it'll be very evident uh, another one is the handlebars coming around here and oh there's that turn okay as long as i do it oh here we go this side bang on the left and causing an impact fracture through here. But again, the bike's not gonna fail in half, so get it fixed or not. You know, and this one here, hitting, could hit the frame as well in a crash, bang. This one doesn't have any dents, doesn't have any dents, but this little brake thing here, in a crash and a crit, go, turns around, bang, pops a hole in there. Still here up to ride, in my opinion. Fifth most dangerous part is if you've had a crash and you've cracked the chain stay down here if that snaps you know if there's a crack in there I can feel that now there's no cracks in there I can just feel it there's no cracks but if that snaps and you're in a sprint then your back wheel can like warp out and you can cause a crash I had a friend back in the days on his CAD 5 Cannondale they were famous for cracking around there and actually failing in a sprint and he snapped his collarbone I'd warn him though to check it but he didn't check it soon enough but he did get worried for the frame though so the consolation prize we did break his collarbone and uh, that's about it. Otherwise, very, very safe. Now let's go to the number one area, the steerer. It's very, very quick and easy test. And it's amazing how many people don't do this. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna actually drop this fork out. We're gonna drop this fork out. I wanna really inspect it very, very well. Make sure this fork is safe for the next person who's gonna ride it. So the first step is we're gonna have to take this front brake out. A bit of a bolt here. I could do this faster with better tools, but I'll just edit the video. But I just want to show people all you need is a multi-tool. Take the front wheel out. Over here. This is back alley. Bike mechanics and turn rider. Front brake off. Now this one. First we undo the stem bolts. There's three bolts you have to undo here. Make sure you always have a, a nice crisp tool. If you 
if your tool's getting rounded, you can get a file angle grinder and just flatten it right off and you get a brand new one. And that way it keeps your bolts lasting longer. Make sure before you undo it is you put it all the way in, stick it all the way in, put this Allen key balls deep into that stem head and then you turn it, otherwise you can strip them as well. So balls deep and then twist. Balls deep and then twist. So that's undone. This is undone. We should use a torque wrench when we're doing it up, unless you're experienced backyard like myself. Be right, and then we're going to go again. Put it in balls deep. Twist it. This is just the tension screw. See what I did? See what I did then is I had the hand underneath, and that there again, because when you, you don't want to drop tools on carbon fiber parts, that can cause a, a crack. So this is why I don't recommend people have carbon fiber bikes as their first one. Because if I drop that onto that seat post, it could have crack the seat post potentially or put a little scratch in there we didn't want so top cap and again this is not the best place to do this sort of work because if we lose a screw it could get lost in the gravel but you yeah, know desperate times desperate measures so uh so Natasha's body language there she's crossing her arms she's getting a bit over this video <laughs> so we have to hurry it up a bit and we're gonna just gently here we go gonna Lift that fork off like so. Let's take it easy. It looks really good. So far, so good. What we're looking for is the famous ring of death, which I'll show you what causes that. So we'll take off our caps in the pocket. I've already, already lost the screw. I don't know where I put it. Do you remember where I put it? <laughs> it's not. Okay. Not. Oh, where are you put it, mate? From Manchester, mate. From Bristol. Shout out to the crew from Liverpool. This is the another cap here. <laughs> Some people don't get my humour, and that's fine. I didn't even get it myself. Ooh, I don't, I don't, this isn't looking good. This we could have a ring of death on our hands. Oh my god! This is C's in there. This could be a ring of death. This could be a ring of death, and that means this fork is going to go into landfill, unfortunately. So. This is things you get when you buy secondhand bikes. Oh, I don't like the look of this. You stop filming for a bit, I'll just get this out. Okay. Yeah, I'll put the glove on. This is the glove of power. And uh, you get a, we get a power strike, a blue sleep power strike. We just, ah! Oh, that actually did hurt. I'll make sure we're not going to scratch this bike up. I <laughs> did. Tasha's laughing. She's laughing to get hurt. Oh, oh it's sort of like it, it's, it, it moved. Oh man, that's so. Palm strike is the, the most powerful. If you punch that, that's going to bust your knuckles up. So I'm hitting that pretty hard. Um, oh, Jesus. Alright, let's cut the camera again. And then, we need a hammer and a screwdriver. This is going to take a bit longer than we thought. We're going to go home and get one. Back in a sec. Hammer, screwdriver, and some organic vegan carbon friendly grease. And uh, let's get to it. Alright, so we're going to very carefully, very very carefully, we're dealing with lightweight, this is lightweight, top shelf carbon, made in China, and uh, we're just gonna, just gonna tap it, so you can sort of see, be careful don't scratch into the carbon there, so just on the edge there, there we go, just broken that seal, and then that's the bearing seal there. And this could be prevented just by regular greasing of the headset. So just going around and tapping that. Everyone loves a good tap. We don't have ring of death. We this fork is I'll give it I'll give it a clean, and then we'll definitely it seems pretty good for now. 
be, be careful with the bearings falling out as well. We just lost a few bearings. So uh, we'll keep an eye on those where they went. All over the carbon here, it, there's a couple of scratches, just normal wear and tear. Nothing looks out of place. Uh, I'll give you a bit of spit and polish, just clean up a little bit better. But it looks all pretty hunky dory. We'll look for the middle here. I look down here, the lower bearing. Everything looks pretty good down here. And I'll put a bit of grease on there and I'll check the inside of the head tube for anything that's sus. But otherwise, you're going to always have a few scratches here and there. That's pretty normal. But I like this. I'm going to take this out and shine a torch down there and double check that. A bit of spit and polish. So spit on the shaft, move it up and down. Oh, look at that, nice and clean now. Polish that shaft. Beautiful. And we are, uh, I've checked the fork, I've greased the bearings, I've given it the full on A grade gold standard safety check in my opinion and uh, uh, you could take your bike to a, I mean some people go oh you got a bike on the ground you're not a true mechanic I'm not a true mechanic but I'm very thorough when it comes to these headset areas and most bike shops don't even do this you could take take the bike to the bike shop they're not going to strip it down to the detail that I have to send this is something you have to learn for yourself and learn how to do it you know you could take a, I could take this bike to the bike shop any bike shop in the world and say hey can you give a safety check they ain't going to strip the fork clean it analyze it put a torch in there down there and stuff like that they ain't going to do that they're just going to go yeah yes it's all right mate she'll be all right give me give me 100 pound give me 50 bucks or whatever so this is this is a detailed inspection uh, that i've given this bike so for me this is very satisfactory i'll put my life on this bike now i'll put my life on it and uh so yeah this is the deal this is the the things that a lot of shops won't do and you have to take the responsibility for yourself this is a very simple thing we've been sitting here in the sunshine in the alleyway just you know getting it done and this is great just a simple thing to do that uh that a lot of people won't do and that's unfortunate so this bike i give it safety approval during my safety approval i checked the fork tips they look really good condition i checked inside here put the torch inside there it's all looks really legit we'll tighten up this headset set the tension use a torque wrench when i get home double check the tension we're good to go and uh yeah this bike it just gives more confidence there, you know, because what's the point of hurtling down hills? I mean, I see people flying down hills or whatever. So maybe even check your bike lately. I don't know, I'm just a bit, maybe I'm a bit more OCD and safety with an average person. But uh, maybe I've seen more horrific crashes than an average person. But for me, I want to check everything. I'm going to take these bars off as well and uh, check in here for any crimping or any corrosion of the alloy. And that can be uh, another video. So there you go. This is the main one here. And then check your bars. Check under your heavers. Take a bit of time, put the audio book in your ears, and just focus and uh, learn how to do it. It's very simple stuff, man. Very simple stuff. Carbon bikes never fail. What they do happens is people have an accident, they crash it, they over torque it, they crush it. Right? Carbon bike will not fail. I've never, in 22 years of racing and owning carbon bikes, I've never ever seen a carbon bike fail. Link me down below to a carbon bike that's failed from mileage or power. It's always because there's a crash involved, there's a clamp involved, there's a monkey gorilla strength over torquing involved. Carbon bikes don't just fall apart, they don't fail. Right? The carbon part can't fail from power or mileage. Link me down below, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Care for your carbon, it's very delicate. It can't be recycled, but it can be repaired. Look after it, it'll look after you. Thanks important part as well is making sure your steerer plug bung whatever you want to call it make sure that it goes below you know this as long as your stem is or ideally longer some people have like that they have this like that and then it gets crimped here and the carbon fork fails and they end up with a ten thousand dollar dental bill so make sure your plug is always covering the clamping forces and you'll be good to go make sense Get a deep plug if in doubt.